Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate and going to show you how to configure multipath in Red Hat Enterprise Linux Server 7. So, what is multipath? The first question. So, multipath is nothing but we are using a more than one path. So, it is self explanatory saying that we are using a more than one path. It could be two, three, like that. So, what is the reason behind it? Because, for example, in most scenario in IT environment production service they use fiber channel switch and they use SEN storage area network. So from them from them we allocate LAN and from server end we use them and we scan them and we formatted them as LVM or whatever we are using it. So now whenever we are using those LAN from storage area network through fiber channel switch if there is an one path in whether it is in fabric fiber channel switch or in your host bus adapter which is called SBA is failed then we should be able to have a redundant and there is a re redundant path through which we should be able to access the same drive in case of port failure or in case of cable is faulty or in case of your fiber channel switch is faulty right so to avoid this those we use multipathing and in red hat enterprise linux and not only red hat enterprise linux all nix based operating system we have a native multipathing so we need to just install them and enable it so that is how what i'm going to do in this system and i'm going to show you but Currently, since I'm using a virtual environment and I do not have a fiber channel switch environment, I'm going to configure or allocate the LAN from ISCG target server to this system in client system and I'm going to configure a multipath. Right. So to do that, what I need is I need to go to my ISCG target server and I need to configure that so let me just show you that one so those are the region so let me just go to the server and here currently if I do a IPA I have only one interface so this is the interface and this is running this IP so and I I showed you in my previous video in ISCG target and ISCG initiator video how to allocate the LAN and if you have not watched that video please go through that video to understand better so now I have allocated tool and from my ISKG target to this system and if I run this command lsblk I would be able to see this is the tool and 1 GB and there is another disk which is the size of 2 GB and this two disk are coming from one single IP so the IP is this one so in case this interface is caused down and for some reason I'm unable to access this interface then what will happen in my client system this to learn what I'm accessing will inaccessible and I won't be able to access this to learn to avoid this we need to have some kind of fault tolerance right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to allocate another one or two interface in this target server and again I'm going to discover this tool and from the client end and I will configure a multipath in this client system and let's see how it goes so first thing what I have to do is I need to power off this system because uh, it is better to come up with all uh, drivers when the system is coming up I think the UDEV rules will not create if I do an online so let me just power it off and let me just go to my virtual machine here is the virtual machine and I have power out power off my system and this system is running fine so let me just locate to additional 800 interface so let me just add like this network next finish 
and I will add an another interface finish okay so I have added another two interface currently I have all three interface and I just power on my system and it will take it will not take much time because there is nothing running but as the target here so there should not be any issues to boot the system up so let's wait for probably one minute and my system came up let me just go to party session here and let's take a restart session and log in with the root then so now if I just do a IPA I can be able to see there are two more interface which is allocated here but there is no IP on them so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go inside this location sorry this is not the one and let's do CD to this location and I see there is a file only for the first interface the other interface is not created so let me just create an interface like this probably 60 is 37 and one is 38 and let me just modify them so it would be same interface name is a little different here 36 name is 36 sorry it should be 37 here I just need to make that change as 37 here and I need to save this and now I need to make a change on the other interface so the under interfa other interface is 38 and let me save it and let me do a if up for both the interface and let's see if there is any IP it is allocated okay it says some error in 37 let me just do it for the other one I have up sorry IPA and I do not see IP on them so let me just double check 37 38 and let me just do sorry it is RHGL7 so I need to run something called systemctl restart network and looks like some issue in my interface so let me see the udev rule yum dot oh sorry it is rules this udev under rules there is a file and there is no interface created here so what I have to do is let me just double check everything again it is 37 37 and this one is 38 38 but still I'm unable to enable my IP so let's do one thing just restart my system one more time and let's see if it comes up or not
my system are my system is up and now I will be able to log in and let's try to troubleshoot it why I'm unable to do it even though I have changed those settings but it is not working for some reason so let me just go back to this location here and these are the two files if I do IPA okay so the problem is I need to create a device name something like this one and this one so that is why it is not able to start the IP or enable the IP let me just do something like this one I have CFG and the first interface is this one done and second interface is this one then so now this 37 and 38 I want need it so let me just remove RMF and RF 37 38 and now if I just go inside this file I need to change the name here for to this one let me just do VII of CFG you know 33 and let me go to name here and change the device as well and I think the WWID is also not required let me just hasted it for now so 92 is done let me do it for this one VI and let me just copy this portion and change the name here and has the EUID so because it is for the first interface and let me just start the service and hopefully this time it should work restart network and let's hope everything goes fine and I do not see any error here and let me just do a IPA and now it is looks fine so I can able to see the first interface has IP 31 33 and I should have one more 32 so 31 32 33 so 3 IP I have it so now next thing if I go to my client system and if I discover the LAN here again and let me run this command again I forgot the command for target initiator let me just get this file here again and let me just discover it like this and the IP is 31 for the first IP second is 32 and third is 33 so I can able to discover it so now next is to login and let me just login and IP is 31 sorry it is test here not prod and I can able to log in without any issue it seems there is something about the multiple thing that can be ignored since it is successful so I am able to discover it so now the LAN which I am using here pbs minus a minus o plus dev underscore size they're coming in coming for three path so each device now is coming from three path okay so now i'm going to configure a dm multipathing so this is a built-in package which come with red hat 
DVD. So, let me just do a device mapper multipath. So, this is the package and it is already installed. So, I don't need to install it. So, next step is to start the service. Start multipath multipath the service. So, I have started the service and now the next step I need to do is multipath hyphen ll to check whether I can able to see my disk. So, looks like my disk is not able to see because there is a file called multipath.conf which needs to be available under slash etc and that file is not there whether I can copy the file from this location it is a simple file in this location or you can create one. So, to create that we have one command called mpath config and path conf minus minus we just have to specify user underscore friendly names and when I have run this command with one option which are user friendly names and I said no it has created one file under slash etc and now I will be able to see there is a file. So, my file is there now if I do again multipath ll it is still there but it is saying the module is not loaded. So, what I have to do is I just have to do a multipath sorry mod prof to load the module and module name is multipath dm dm multipath is not found it seems let me just start restart the service again and let's see if that helps okay so now when i restart the service the module has started already and if i just check now what was the issue with my module name let me just check the module name multi path and it seems that in rhl7 it is something else so So, dm underscore multipath. So, this is a little slight change in RHL7. Earlier, earlier it was dm minus multipath and now it called dm underscore multipath. So, not an issue. So, now when I run this command, I can able to see both the lens. So, this LAN are having three paths. Now, you can see the first it is coming from this path and another one is 34 and third one is 35. So, by default you do not need to do anything if you just install it by default it will create a file like what I have created and you can specify your options inside this file. So, if I could just go to file multipath.conf you can able to see this is the option which I have selected while creating this file user friendly now and find multipath it is saying yes. So, what I am going to do now I am just going to comment this here uh, which means disabling this and I am going to enable a default option. So, this will going to help me why because there are more options like in default you can see polling interval in every 10 second each path will going to check the other path whether it is alive or not. So, this is what it is and I am just going to enable this here and the next thing is what method I am going to use whether it is a round robin or fault tolerance. So, round robin is a better method. So, I am just going with the default and multi bus grouping id serial and other options you can see those options and their work in multipath.conf manual probably I can show you that one. So, here the user friendly names if I make it as user friendly names equal to yes 
let me show you what going to what it will going to happen and there would be okay so let me just save it and do a system ctl restart multipath d and now notice here you you see the line like this and now if i do multipath ll now you can see here it is saying m path b m path a so this is because i have said a user friendly name equal to yes so this could cause an uh, confusion because whenever every time you are restarting your service or restart your server this may change that is why it is preferable to not use user friendly name equal to yes instead we need to use no and also i can see there is some issue in line 30 number so 31 let me go to line 31 and here looks like it seems fine but i need to close this again here probably okay so now let me do one thing first thing what i'm going to do i'm just going to make this as no here so that it doesn't shows like multipath a or multipath empath a or empath b and the other important thing is you can blacklist your device for example you do not want it to see any disk which is a local disk probably starting with sd and you do not want to, to see those output in multipath hyphen ll so you can blacklist this and also you don't want it to see something starting with ram or you do not want it to, to see your uh, floppy device information so those you can enable it here so you can just blacklist just enable this option i'm just enabling all this and apart from that you can also use aliases so example i can show you what is the use of aliases so let me just save this file and restart the multipath service again and let's do a multipath ll and okay so it says a duplicate keyword let me okay so actually the problem is here so there is and it has this here and if i use this blacklist this portion this portion should be inside this default portion because now i am seeing two different portion and that is why i am getting that error and apart from that if you wanted to use your device some aliases so probably i wanted to say this disk or this LAN I'm going to use for data and I'm going to use this LAN for my Oracle so you might be having a number of LANs assigned to your system and you do not want it to confuse and to avoid that you probably wanted to specify some alias name so for that also what you can do you can go to this section your default section wherever you are specifying your learn and there you just need to specify something like wwid and let me just copy this here sorry and this is going to be my learn wid and let me just go back here and i have to specify my learn information here let me do this the first one let me copy it here and the alias is i'm just going to say the data this is for my data vg and alias portion probably and it's to be update here and enable this one 
and this should be there should be one more curly bracket I need to close it here that is why I am getting that error yes. and let me just restart this multipath service and let us see what it shows this time. So, so it is giving the same thing so that means the setting which I have made is not correct so probably I have to do it in a little different way so what I am going to do is I am just going to comment all this line and I will just come down here in multipath portion since I am using uh, alias and let me just enable everything here and for aliases I can use this portion right so let me just enable it and this one I don't need this two portion I don't need so let me just comment it comment this two portion and here I can specify my LAN ID I will just go back here and copy this LAN UID and name I will do data and same thing I would be able to close it here like this and let's let's just do for one LAN first and let's see whether this is working or not okay so this time it is working and now I can see this LAN is belongs to data group or data VG and here for this one it is not there so let's go to there is some issue in line 97 so okay so here blacklist is enabled let me just disable this two line here and if I restart the service and do a multipath LL I do not see any error so it is coming clean and now probably I need to add an alias for this line let me go to that portion and copy the double id here and I have to specify like this multi path curly bracket open and enter my wwid is this one and now my alias name is for aura probably for oracle we I'm going to use and I just need to remove this close it here and I need to close one more time here so now it looks fine so let me see whether how it went fine or not and everything seems to be fine now I can see there is an aura and now I can see data so both are available and I can see these are coming in 3 LAN so now what is the use like I earlier discussed for example now my this path or this port is failed or this HBA port assume this is an it is coming from an HBM so the first HBA 33000 this is down and it is not accessible so what we can do uh, 
uh, probably we can do it for that last one because I logged into the system with this IP so probably I will do it for the last IP so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to this system here and IP A and I can see there are three interface here one two three so I'm going to make it down here so let me just make it down I have down and it is disconnected so now if I do IP A I can see it is up 31 is up 33 is up 32 is down and let's see what happened in my system so here I can able to see if I do a multiple if an LL I can able to see the third of this IP it is saying fault faulty faulty so that means that path which is I am accessing this LAN through this path this path is failed so now I can see here a failed of failed uh, error but still I have two path active this one and this one through the uh, through this two path I am accessing my LAN and I can able to access it not an issue so that is it. that is the main region see that's it I think you do, yeah, I believe I have able to clear what I have trying to show you here for regarding multipath so there is a region and let me just make that interface again up and let's see I would be able to see that or not and now my interface is up all the interface is up 31 32 33 and let me go to this system and if I do a multiple if an LL okay so it is still saying failed so not an issue probably what we can do is we can just rescan it or reload the multipath let me just reload it again or you don't need to restart it every time for any changes additional changes you can do a reload so now I probably able to see okay so faulty faulty again it is saying faulty probably because I have to log in again for that IP so let me just run that command for 33 I believe I make it down so what was the IP, this one I have config this is for 32 okay so let me just do it for 32 again and now I think I should be able to find but it is still saying failed so I think I need to restart my service for multipath so usually for fiber channel environment you don't need to restart it if you just do a reload it it, it works so norm normally uh, you don't need to restart the service but here it is saying faulty fail for this one still and it is still I'm unable to see that so let me just scan it for everything 31 32 33 so there must must be an issue with this iskaji if i restart the service but still it is giving me an issue here probably let me just stop the service and try if that helps multipart ll wow it is still saying my multipart information okay so I still confused right now because it should not show 
So, let me just do a log out for all this 3 IP and now again login for 31 32 so for 32 it is taking a little time I hope this IP is up 32 is up here devils minus F okay so seems like some issue in my IP 32 that is why I am still saying that is failed. So, anyway, meanwhile, the point was about the multipathing configuration. So, that I have showed you. So, that works, but only thing did not work here about the IP32, it is still saying failed. So, anyway, so currently I have logged into two IP, one is uh, 31 and 33. So, 32 has some issues that is why I am unable to see and if I run a multipath if an LL I can able to see there are two path now. So, this is the first one and ok. So, again it came. So, now I can see all three path. So, there is some issue it means because it is sometime it says fail and sometime it says faulty. So, in iSCSI, in real time scenario in production environment, we should uh, we should not use iSCSI. So, this is for just a demo to show you how to configure a multi-parting that is why I am showing you. So, currently not an issue, I can able to see all the three paths for this two lens. So, those are the three lens, uh, three path and those are the two lens. I also showed you how to make an alias for them. So, this is what about multipath there is nothing much about it if you still wanted to sh understand about uh, what are those options are and what are those options means then you just need to go to multipath manual file and you can understand from there for this polling interval what it does and other information like multipath directory and priority or for path grouping those information you can get it from this manual. So, basically there is nothing much in multipath. So, we use for fault tolerance if something goes wrong in one port, uh, one port so another port is still available and still configured in multipath. So, we would be able to access it. So, that is the main region. So, I believe I am I'm able to uh, I am able to uh, discuss or I am able to tell you whatever uh, regarding multipath and it makes sense to you I believe if not then please let me know and uh, please write uh, write them in youtube comment section and let me know and uh, feel free to ask me if any have any doubts ok. So, for now this is it uh, need that is what I was I was supposed to discuss in this video. So, please subscribe my channel okay, and also please hit like if you like this video content. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good day. See you next time.